Hi everybody. Hi. Welcome to my first um, attempt at shooting a long form video. I'm trying to do these as I film so I can upload a full complete version of whatever I'm doing and then have an edited one for people who don't want to spend an hour with me. Though why you wouldn't want to spend an hour with me is like beyond because I'm amazing. Uh, but yeah. Earth, oh. Oh. Let us address the elephant in the room. Wait, hold on. Diet Dr. Pepper and cream soda? Are you kidding me? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, queen. Y'all, that's good. Dr. Pepper's kind of spicy for me because y'all know I'm an 87-year-old man. But, uh, that's pretty good. All right. Oh no, everything's falling apart already. Alright. Okay. Calm, everybody calm down. It's gonna be fine. Everybody's gonna be fine. I have a mass. Oh! It's like a freaking rock slide over here. Come on. This, this is what gets edited out. This and me going. Um, and. So. <clears throat> I have a Dollar Tree wreath form here, and the way these are set up is that there is one of these that's hooked to these two rings. It is in the middle of these two braces, supports, whatever you want to call them. Then there's two more hooked to the outer two rings that are between the brace and the middle. Brace in the middle. So... That gives you three pipe cleaners. I leave mine all one length just because I don't know how much stuff I'm going to end up putting in a wreath. So I prefer to have them big. And that's 18. So, <clears throat> see, and sometimes they want to move around a little bit. So I'm just giving it a little squeeze. Don't squeeze too tight because you know these Dollar Tree forms will just snap in half. Alright, so that's done. This is where all our mesh is going to go. And the mesh that I'm using is this um, poly jute. It's cut at 20 inches. And because it's cut at 20 inches, that means I can get 18 cuts out of 10 yards. Because it's 360 inches in a yard. 20 times 18 is 360. And yeah. My battery is already whining at me because of course it is. That's better. Okay, let me pull my chair over because my back, y'all, been having so many back problems. I don't know. It hasn't been, you know, for too long, just like the past 18 years. Okay, so I'm working with the poly jute, 20 inches, and then I have uh, these. This is also a poly jute, but it has the red, white, and blue foil in it. These were cut to 10 inches, they are rolled up into little tubes, and then I put two on top of each other. And normally, I would put these together with a pipe cleaner. This is pretty thick. I mean, it's still somewhat transparent, like you can still see through it, but it's, um, the jute in there makes it thick. So, I was having trouble twisting it on there, so I was like, you know what, I have... 12,000 cable ties, so I'm just going to use cable ties. And this mesh starts with white and it ends with red. I think this is, yeah, this is one piece right here. So I put red on one side, white on the other when I made the little dealy doos, the little curls. It doesn't really matter, especially if you're not using mesh that's right. 
that sounds like that broom thing, you know, when you can stain your broom up on end? Almost. So I have all those done. There's 36 of them. There's 18 of them. There's 36 curls. And as is my preferred method, I am just going to push my mesh down. Drop it in. Oh, you'll get in all the ASMR sounds. And I am going to, because last time I did this, I like did the whole outside ring, and then I went to the inside, and it was hard for me to get to these ties, so I'm going to put this down. I'm going to give that a twist. And then while I'm here, I'm also going to put this down. Give that a twist. Just like two twists. You don't want to go, you don't have to go crazy. And I want these, I'm going to show you better on the next one. I want these to kind of open up like that. So instead of going to the next one on the outside, I'm going to come to this one. Because I want to be able to reach everything pretty easily. So yeah, today is Sunday the... Uh, 15th, and I'm on, like, my first official day of self-imposed quarantine. I don't know what everybody else is doing to me. I don't know. It's... I think people are overreacting. Like, the toilet paper situation. Come on. You... You're greedy. Um... You know, other people need toilet paper. So, that, that, that seems like overreacting to me. Because, I mean, I don't care how long you're quarantined in your house. You don't need 48 rolls of toilet paper. Well, I guess, I mean, if you were quarantined indefinitely, but... Anyway. Um... I think that's overreacting. Like, I don't think it's overreacting to be cautious, but I think buying all the hand sanitizer and... All the groceries, um, I think that's a bit much. And the reason why I decided to... See, I'm pulling this one. Pulling this one and pulling this side. So they make like a, a round. The reason I decided to self-quarantine, so to say, which really just means I'm staying home, um... I went to Walmart yesterday because I go to Walmart every Saturday with my mom. It's our Saturday thing. You know, it's her. Pull these down this way. It's our Saturday thing. She's off of work. We go to Walmart. She gets her grocery shopping done for the week. I get my grocery shopping done for like two days because I never buy any food. Um, we go to lunch. We went yesterday. When I tell you it was the craziest thing I've ever seen, I just... Lay down, baby. I'm all good. Um, just, just ridiculousness. Like, I've never been to Walmart on Black Friday because, don't even get me started on that, but the just the sheer amount of people, and I know it was a weekend, and I know, like, this is, like, the height of the hysteria, I hope. Where they were like, okay, you know, this is affecting more people. Like, you need to be prepared. And, like, definitely be, prepa be prepared. Definitely. Don't be crazy. So there were just, like, so many people. There were, like, people, like, it just, it brings out the worst in people. When, you're, when you think you have to, like, fight for your survival. And I'm like, dude, it's Purell. Like, do you not own soap? I get that Purell's better. Hand sanitizer's better. Whatever. But come on. And there were just, there were so many people, our Walmart was so crazy that they weren't even stocking anything. Like, they weren't putting the food on the shelves. They were just bringing it out and, like, putting it in the middle of the aisles. And they were out of jambalaya, not jambalaya mix. They were out of gumbo mix. And I said, oh, no. I said, no, ma'am. 
because you can't expect me to be quarantined and not have jambalaya. Why do I keep saying jambalaya? It's not jambalaya, it's gumbo. So, after that, you know, going out with my mom, I was just like, you know what? I'm not cut out for this. It makes me, I mean, I know, I, I know I've talked about this a little bit. Um, I am incredibly anxious and not like one of those people that's like, oh man, I'm so anxious. Oh, it's like, you know, I have anxiety about things and I'm like, no, you don't. Um, I don't want to downplay your experience, Beverly, but you don't have anxiety. You're just nervous. Like you just, I don't, I don't know what's going on with you, but my anxiety, and now I'm not saying like everybody's different. Um, my anxiety got to a point when I was like, when it first started happening, I was in my early thirties and I was out walking one day, exercise, you know, getting a little exercise when I used to do such ridiculous things, and my legs just felt like they stopped working. And I didn't understand at the time that I had a panic attack while I was out. Like, I just did not understand. I came home, you know, I took off my sweaty clothes, I got in the shower, and I was like, I just overdid it. Um, you know, I, I walked too long, it's too hot outside, you know, I had all these things. And then it kept happening until one night I was like, this is it, I am having a heart attack. Um, and that began a very, very long couple of years of, well, I don't know, it was probably like two years of me, every time something happened, emergency room, immediately, because I could have stretched and, you know, pulled something, I said, nope, that's, no, that's a stroke, um, my stomach hurts, that's cancer, my head hurts, stroke, heart attack, brain tumor, um, and it got bad. Like, my anxiety got to a point where I just could not, I did not feel like I was functioning, like, leading a good life because it was so bad. So, you know, thankfully now, I am somewhat managed due to, um, you know, finding the right combination of drugs that work for me. Kind of managed. I mean, I still, I'm still anxious. Like, when I was sick health stuff just like drives me over the edge like I'm the only person who has a cold and like I need to go to the emergency room and they need to tell me that I don't have something horrible which is weird because I've never freaked out about like getting the coronavirus yet um but yeah so Walmart is just wait am I missing something oh no these are just really close okay um, Walmart is just, there's, there were too many people. I don't do well in crowds to begin with. Like, that's something that I don't think has much, like, I have anxiety about, not like social anxiety. Like, if you need me to go to a party, if i feeling up to it, like, I'm going to be the belle of the damn ball. Like, don't invite me to your wedding because it will be all about me. That's just who I am. But it's crowds, like, in general. Like, I'm, I'm super claustrophobic. Um, I've always, like... One of my biggest fears, since I saw the movie with Sandra Bullock, was, like, being buried alive. That probably wasn't even Sandra Bullock, now that I'm thinking about it. So, I don't like crowds. I don't like feeling like you're in my space. And when you go to Walmart and there's a thousand people, obviously, you know, everybody's in my damn space. And I'm in their space. And <coughs> it was just not... It was not a fun experience for me. I told my mom I didn't want to go, and she's like, it's not going to be that bad. And, like, we went super early, and it was it was horrible. Like, I was, I was, up, like, I was upset that we, that we actually were there. Like, I wanted to leave before we got anything. So, I came home. You know, we went out, we went out and got our lunch for the last time, and I was just like, you know what? This is not for me. This is for people who have something of a, a, I don't know, a stronger constitution that can handle these crowds and not get very, very upset, because I was really upset. They can either not get very upset or they can deal with it some kind of way. But like, if I get anxious enough and like I see people doing the stuff that I saw yesterday, like just the, like people just like, 
you know, jumping in front of other people to grab a can of soup. Like, that, that makes me angry, and then, like, I react angrily, and I can't really react angrily because, you know, it's a, it's a bunch of people, and I start going off, and then they start going, it's just, it's a bad situation all around, so I'm just, I'm gonna be okay in the house. I don't have enough food, I know that, but I don't eat anymore, so I should be okay. I made me some gumbo, I had me some stuff to make some stuffed peppers. I have three dozen eggs, uh, <laughs> which might seem like a lot, but I do love my eggs. So we'll see how long that lasts. But yeah, I'm not like, I'm not the type of person that's like, oh God, we have to stay home. Like, oh, we had plans to go home. Like, you tell me, you cancel plans on me. I am like indebted to you. I love you. You cancel a plan. Like we had plans and you cancel them. I'm like, oh my God, thank God. Thank God she canceled, because I don't want to leave. Um, me and my friend, it's a funny story. Rasputina, I don't know if anybody knows who Rasputina is. They're a, kind of like a goth band. Like, I was never goth, like, farthest thing from it. But, um, and they play, like, cellos and violins and, like, just make really interesting gothy music. Anyway, they came to New Orleans, like, three years in a row, and... Me and my friend Michelle kept saying, oh, we're going to go see Rasputina. Rasputina's coming. And, like, the build-up to it, like, you're like, oh, man, they're going to go. They're going to come. Let's get tickets. Let's go. Blah, blah, blah. And every time they came, when the day finally came for, like, the concert, we were both just like, yeah, I don't really feel like going that. And I was like, yeah, me neither. Um, so I never got to see Rasputina live. But, like, I don't, I'm fine at home. As long as I have something to do, like, I'm good. The only thing I'm worried about is <clears throat> my sister, and I'm not, I'm not worried about her, it's just like I go and get her almost every day and we hang out because she doesn't drive, um, she's handicapped, she doesn't drive, so like I go and get her, we go places, and you know, it sucks that we can't like just go and do things, you know, like we'll go to the Dollar Tree or wherever, and I'm just not feeling great about doing that for either of us. Like, I don't want her to get sick. I don't want, I definitely don't want me to get sick. And I'm worried about my mom. She works at Walmart and ugh, she can't decide she wants to like not be there, you know? Something's wrong with that one. I don't know what it is, but something's wrong with it. Yeah, this is turning out uh, a lot fuller than I thought it was, but okay. So yeah, those are my, um, concerns, my, uh, why do I feel like I don't have enough of these? Did I drop, I probably dropped some somewhere. So like, not thrilled about staying home, but also not like, oh no, like, I know some people are like super social, like they want to go out and they want to go to bars and they want to go to movies and, you know, whatever. I'm just like, really? Don't y'all have Netflix? Can't you drink at home like a normal person? I don't drink, but I mean... Maybe if I could drink, I would drink, but probably not. So I'm not messing anything that I've been out. Speaking of uh, not being out, I went to the neurologist on Wednesday. It was like the 11th. It was last week. Um, again, more... Adam's health issues, the special after school special. I have really bad tension headaches because I stress so much about things I have no control over. So I get these really bad tension headaches and when I was sick, I got one that lasted, I think I got it on Thursday and it didn't go away until the following Tuesday. It was, it was pretty bad. Um, and the thing about, like, when you get a migraine, when you get a tension headache, when you get something, like, if I can't control it at home, the only option I have is to go to the emergency room and get IV treatment for it. Whether it's just fluids, whether it's fluids and Toradol and Benadryl and Compazine or Dilaudid or whatever 
whatever the hospital feels like giving you that day, pretty much. But, you know, like, if you hurt yourself, you go to the hospital and you're like, okay, I'm in the hospital. This is going to make me better. Make me feel better. This is where I need to be. But when you have such a, like, debilitating headache, that is the last place you want to be. It's bright. It's loud. You know, you, you're there forever. Because literally everybody takes precedent over a person with a headache because, you know. But I mean, it's not like, oh, my head hurts. It's like, hey, I haven't eaten in three days because I throw up because my head hurts so much. So I went to the neurologist after the last, you know, spell in their emergency room. And this is getting really big, y'all. America! Heck yeah! Um, I finally got an appointment with a neurologist. They weren't accepting my insurance. And then, of course, they called to schedule the appointment after I got the referral from the emergency room. And she's like, oh yeah, we take your insurance. And I was like, well, I wish you would have told me that three years ago, Shannon. I don't know what her name is. Super rude, though. Like, the rudest receptionist that I've ever seen. Um... So I go there, and, you know, there's this whole thing, because, of course, they said they take my insurance, and then they didn't take my insurance, and then they needed some kind of number, and this is not twisted on here at all. They need this, they need that. Anyway, I wait like an hour, fill out this never-ending, I need to clip this together while I fix this. Look at these little clips from Dollar Tree, isn't that adorable? And everything fell over. Where's the one that doesn't want to behave? Oh, I'm missing one right here, and this one is moving. Wow, okay. Um, fill out this massive questionnaire, and it's like... Oh, that was my stomach. This massive questionnaire that's got all these questions, and, like, I'm okay with filling out, like, a huge questionnaire, like, because if it's going to help me get help, like, I'll sit there and fill out the whole thing. Like, whatever form you need me to fill out, obviously it's... You need the information, but it was formatted so weird, it was like... You know, it said, like, oh, who in your family has cancer or history of heart, heart problems or stroke or whatever. But instead of, like, making it easy for you to fill out, it had, like, all the abbreviations for, like, mom, brother, sister, dad, maternal grandmother, maternal grandfather. And, it, like, I kept having to, like, refer back. Like, I know what all those things are, obviously. But the way it was formatted, it was, like, super hard to figure, you know, like, following this line and saying, okay, well, cancer and... Grandma had that, so I have to go here and then follow it up. Okay, yeah, that's maternal grandmother. It was just, it was a mess. So by the time they finally got me back there, 40 minutes after my apartment, my apartment, 40 minutes after my appointment was supposed to start, I was already just, like, pissed. I was like, oh. Because, like, let me tell y'all something about me. I'm telling y'all a lot of stuff about myself. Y'all going to know me better than you know yourselves by the time this video is over. Do not, whatever you do, Two things, I guess, but they're, they're the same thing to me. Do not waste my time. Honestly, I have friends that I have been friends with for years that I will hopefully be friends with for years. If there have been times where they have been late, um, or, you know, they said they were going to be here at some time, they didn't show up at that time, or... Something happened, and we were supposed to get together, and they couldn't. Um, not like the canceling plans things, just like, it's a lot of, like, other things. Um, I will hold a grudge against that person for so long, and I have stopped being friends with people for wasting my time. Because I just, I can't. Because if you're wasting my time, if, if I'm sitting somewhere waiting for you and you waste my time, you are wasting my money. Because that is time that I could have spent right here making this wreath. So I can sell this wreath, so I can make money, so I can make this video, so I can make money on YouTube, so I can get this done, so I can move on to something else, so I can free up this space. You're wasting my time, you're wasting my money. To me, that's just like, I, I can't. I stopped seeing a cardiologist that I had to see because he was an hour and a half late for an appointment. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, it's just, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was, if it was, if it had been one of those things where he's like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, there was a, a car wreck and I had to save a baby. 
like, okay, waste my time for that. Like, uh, that's, like, I don't want you to do that. But still, that's understandable. Like, if it's some kind of emergency, like, I get that. But she was, the receptionist was like, he's just running a little late at lunch. And I was like, he's running a little late at lunch? I should have had lunch an hour and a half ago. But I haven't because I'm still waiting for him. So, I f I'm so far off on a tangent here. Oh, about the neurologist. So, like, don't waste my time. Don't. Don't say you're going to buy something for me and then me get everything together and then you, like, take forever to pay. That could have been sold to somebody else in the time that I'm waiting for you. Like, don't don't try it. Don't do it. I will cut you out like a spot on a potato. So, by the time I see the neurologist, they've wasted a lot of my time. Um, and it was so hot. It was... Wait, am I going to have enough? I'm supposed to have five of these. I have one, two, three, four. Is one of them missing? I think one of them is short. I don't think that's what it is. It's boiling hot in the waiting room. I'm waiting, 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 waiting. And finally, the receptionist calls me back, and I'm like, thank God. And this is the first time I'm seeing this doctor. I don't know who the doctor is. Um, so they put me in a room, and she takes my blood pressure. And it is 190 over 90. And she says, oh. She's like, your blood pressure is really high. And I was like, that's not right. And she said, well, that's what the machine says. I said, I don't care what the machine says. My blood pressure is not 190 over 90. If my blood pressure was 190 over 90, I'd be dead right now. So she takes it again. And it's like 150 over um, 80. And I was like, that doesn't seem right either, but whatever. And I, I attribute it completely to just being so pissed off. So, doctor, neurologist finally comes in, and, you know, we're talking, and I'm like, okay, she's nice, you know, and if she can help with some, some course of treatment, you know, try new medicine, try some kind of whatever, like, I'm, I'm here for it, like, I'm okay with that. So, <laughs> why is this so jaggedy? She, um... She comes in and we go over, like, my previous headaches and stuff, and she says, oh, well, how long have you been having headaches? And I said, oh, you know, probably since I was 16, about, you know, around about there. And she's like, you've been having headaches for half your life. And I was like, yeah, well, more than half my life, really. She's like, and this is your first time seeing a neurologist? And I'm just like, you know, I tried to see you guys when this first started getting really bad, because my headaches didn't start getting really bad until, like, three or four years ago. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, Shannon out there told me y'all didn't accept my insurance and whatever. Fire her. So we go through this whole thing and what my, um, my primary has prescribed and, you know, what I think my triggers are. And she's like, okay, well, what happens? She was asking me, like, how I, how I manage things. And she says, well, what happens if you're out with all your friends and you get a headache? And I was just like, what? <laughs> she said, you're out with all your friends and you get a headache. And I was like, um, that would never happen. She says, are you less prone to headaches when you're around your friends? I was like, no, I would never go out with my friends. Like, that sounds terrible. Like, no. So she's like, you don't go out? And I was like, no, I don't go out. Why would I go out? Too old for that crap. I mean, I'll go, like, lunch with people, but not, like, out at the club with my friends, getting a headache, popping Fiora set. Um, so I'm like, oh, no, that would never happen. So she's just, like, confused by that, because why wouldn't I be? And she's like, so your headaches keep you from going out? And I'm like, no, I said I just don't want to. I'm just not in the mood, sis. Not for me. Which I never, like, even when I was younger... I mean, I'm not gonna... I don't drink. So, like, why am I gonna go to, like, a bar? I don't like crowds, so I'm not gonna, like, go to the movies. I went to one concert. I, I just... It's, it's not my thing. So she's like, so... You you just don't like going out. And I was like, I just don't like going out. Like, that's it. That's, don't, don't go searching for some other reason. Because there is none. I just don't like going on. This is enormous. What is going on? Um, so then she says, what if... Um, 
She's like, well, how do you feel when you have plans? Because she doesn't get it at this point. She's like, how do you feel when you have plans to go out with your friends and you can't go? Oh, no, she said, what do you do if you get a headache? Like, I'm at home and I'm waiting to go to the club with all my friends who are, you know, nearly 40 and have kids and didn't go to clubs when they were 20 and didn't have kids. But, like, what are you going to do? What do you do when, you know, you're supposed to go out to the club, to the club, and popping bottles and doing whatever the kids do these days? Molly, I don't know. Um, what do you do when that happens? And I was like, um, just not show up. Like, maybe send a text, but I, I don't know. Like, again, would never happen. So... We go through this whole thing about how I'm basically a hermit, um, which, hey, don't knock it till you tried it, doctor. And Shannon, devil Shannon, she knew it was hot in there. She could see me sweating. All right, I think there's one more. Um, wait, is, oh yeah, there's one right here. Okay, so there's one more, and I might have not cut my mesh perfectly because I know this one is not 20 inches. This one is only 15 inches, but you know what? You take the good, you take the bad, you take the rest, and then you have 80 sitcom. So yeah, we go through everything. And she's like, so you're on this medication? And I was like, yep, I'm on Fioraset for abortive. Um is an abortive medicine, and I'm on amitriptyline or uh, Elevil as a preventative. So she's like, I don't like those. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe you should have told Shannon that when I called a year ago to let me come in, you know? Y'all, I'm never going to forgive Shannon. It was so hot. I'm like, y'all, it was hot. When I got to come home... And change my shirt and think about taking a shower because I sweated so much in the doctor's office. It's too damn hot. So she's like, okay, well, the Elevil, you know, that really makes you gain weight. And she's like, I already noticed that you're a fat bastard. And I'm like, wait, what? And she's like, oh, nothing. Um, but yeah, like the Elevil, just trimming that up a little bit. The Elevil makes you gain weight and the Fiora set is habit forming and it can give you rebound headaches. And I'm like, well... Like, seriously, me with, me with, what was that? What just happened, y'all? I don't know. Um, me with, like, habit-forming stuff, like, it's not a problem for me. I have a whole family full of addicts, and I know better than that. Like, I'm not saying, like, I'm immune to, um, immune to anything. It's just, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that person. Look how huge this thing is. I can't even fit it all on screen. So, she took me off of the Fiora set and prescribed me something else. And of course, my insurance immediately was like, absolutely not. No, we are not paying for this. So, I don't know what's going on with that. And then she wants me to stop taking amitriptyline because I'm a fat bastard. Her words, not mine, but also mine in therapy the other day. Um, so, yeah, that was that. And this is enormous. This is so big. It is not even a wreath anymore. This is this is the middle. Wait. This, this is the middle. Right there. Wow. So, um... I know if I want an extra huge wreath, this is the, uh, this is the way to go here. So I am going to... I still need to put my sign on. I still need to make a bow. I'm going to take a little break because my back hurts. And I will be back to finish this. This is nice, though, huh? I mean, I see, like, these giant deco mesh wreaths, and I'm like, what are you going to do with that? It's bigger than your door. And this one is, wait, let me see how big this one is. This is one inch over here. It's 24 inches. I mean, that's pretty big. And especially if I went through and pushed all of these out, like, to try to get more of a center. And I'm sure some of these need to be moved. Oh, no, they're all still kind of where they're supposed to be. This one isn't. You need to come this way, and you need to go that away. Yeah? Kind of? Yeah, there we go. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take a break and rest my back and 
lay on the heating pad for a minute, and then I will come back and we can continue stories of uh, nonsense that nobody cares about. But yeah, there you go. This is a long form video. I don't know how long it is, but um, it's brought to you by Diet Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored, hashtag brand partner. Refreshing, but also spicy because I'm old. I'm an old man. Okay, I will be back. All right, I am rested and showered and fed and out of breath. I don't know why. Um, okay, I'm going to make a bow. And I'm using, I love this Dollar Tree ribbon because I always use it as like a filler. Especially when I'm doing something that has a bunch of burlap or jute or whatever in it already. So I have this. This one's from Hobby Lobby. It's a natural and navy stripe. Four dollars. Ridiculous. Um, cause especially because it's only three yards. And then this was 30 feet of just a red, white, and blue. Again, not red, white, and blue. Red and blue with the natural. And over here I have a white canvas from Walmart and this one that I have been using nonstop because I bought like a hundred rolls and they're tucked off to the side over here because they are the spools are still on my ribbon holder. So we are starting with I don't know what I want. I want I know I want this on the bottom. Yeah I want this on the bottom and then, then the burlap, then the white, then the stripe, then this stripe. But I think I just want like a um like a big kind of kind of um ugh. I can't think because I can't breathe <clears throat> like a big firecracker you know like a firework and I'm going to make this I've been having so much trouble with like six inches but. Thing. I feel like every time I do a six inch loop, it's just it gets all like big and weird on me. But this is pretty stiff, so I think it just might be okay. Eight inches. This one's gonna go up. This one's gonna go down. This one's gonna go up. This one's gonna go down. Right? Yeah. Across from each other. <clears throat> I hate this thing. I can't find I I I can't find my hammer anywhere. Cause I think if I really pounded these in, I would not struggle as much as I do. Can't find my hammer. Can't find my staple gun. Like, did somebody come in and take all the things I use to fasten things to other things? I would not be surprised. Alright, this one is going to be like seven and a half. Let's try that. Okay, that's, how did I figure that? Because these are eight, okay, so these are like seven and a half. And our loops are going to be, these are six, so I'm going to aim for like five and a half. You don't have to twist this ribbon, I mean, do you? Not really, but let's do it anyway. Alright, I'm gonna cut this off ahead. I'm gonna film a video and it's gonna be called Building a Better Bow Maker. Because this, y'all know I struggle. 
And there's nothing wrong with this. It's just like, why would they not make it so where everything stays in there so much better? All right, so we did stripe, burlap. Now I'm going to do white and then burlap with stripe, I think. Yeah, I left, um, <clears throat> I think I am partially out of breath because I left the house. I don't know why I would do something so stupid, but I left the house to go pick up something. I'm going to do this one, this tail at six. To go pick up something to eat. And it is 81 degrees outside. And if you're thinking, oh man, I thought it was like still winter. Well, we have like a couple days of winter. This one's at five. And then all of a sudden it's summer. There's no spring. It is just blasting a terrible, horrible heat. And it's miserable and I don't get anything done all summer. Have, this is serious too. It's not like something stupid that I'm making up. Reverse seasonal effect disorder. You know, most people get so down in the dumps because it's so cold and dreary and dark during the winter and blah 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 because they're whiny babies. No, I mean, it's as valid as anything else. I, no lie, get horribly depressed in the summer. Just like lacking motivation to do anything because it is so godforsaken hot outside. I'm going to do this one at the same size, which was six with the five inch loops. Um. Oh god, it's just... Whew. I am not, like, I'm dreading it. We had a super mild winter. I hope that means a mild summer. I know it doesn't, but please just let me live with my delusions. So hot. Alrighty. And Netflix. Keep recommending this movie to me. They say, oh, we think 98% you're going to like this movie. First of all, how do they know that when they took away the actual rating system? You know how you just like thumbs up or thumbs down? Like, what if I liked the movie, but it wasn't great, you know? And then I give it a thumbs down, and then... You need to be quiet. You need to quit being a bad boy. You're embarrassing me in front of my friends. I know, baby. Go lay down. Um, you know, if I don't like everything about the movie, like, it's not a five star, and then I give it a thumbs down, and then, like, do they just never recommend anything like it again? Anyway, they keep showing me this movie. Oh, you got a toy, so God only knows what's going to happen next. It's called Girl on the Third Floor. It's about this guy. He's renovating his house and walking around in his underwear because I don't know what people do. I know what I don't do. I don't walk around in my damn underwear. Uh-oh. Business. You need to calm down. You need to take a time out. I'm going to do these. Um, that's about four and a half. So he's renovating this house and, you know, things are wacky. I'm not going to spoil it in case anybody wants to watch it. But... My main criteria for watching a horror movie is that I need to, before I watch the movie, because the trailer did not look, like, terrible, and I'm going to do a little loop in the middle right here. The trailer did not look terrible. I mean, I didn't watch the whole trailer. The little preview they show you when you're deciding what the hell you're going to watch didn't look terrible. So I said, okay, I'm going to give this a go. And I started watching this morning... I watched a little bit when I went to lay down. I watched a little bit while I was eating. And the thing that I always do, especially with horror movies, if there is a dog in the movie, before I commit to watching it, before I'm like, ooh, I want to find out what happens, I go to doesadogdie.com. If you haven't been to doesadogdie.com, you need to go. Because it will tell you, without any other spoilers, whether or not a dog dies in a movie. Because let me tell you, I have to be prepared for that, or I have to skip it entirely. I did not do it. I forgot. It was early, when I started watching it, and I'm like, man, this dog has been around for almost half this movie. And then he wasn't around no more. So, I was very upset about that. I'm still upset about that.
I mean, why y'all gotta kill a dog? Why, why, why does a dog have to die in a damn horror movie all the time? Make me wanna fight. Alright, I don't have a pipe cleaner here, and I'm so exhausted I can't get up, but I will. There's one on the floor, but if I reach for it, I'm definitely gonna sprain everything in my body. What are you doing? You're a bad dog. <clears throat> So yeah, if you want to watch that movie, be aware. The German Shepherd, who the guy is kind of a jerk to, does not make it to the end of the movie. I'm spoiling that for you. I don't know what else happens. Maybe the dog comes back to life, but uh, I doubt it. All right, so I'm putting my uh, squish down. Get in there. Okay, that's Anna. Looks good. And I'm reminding myself right now not to cut the zip tie until everything is floofed and fluffed and cut and trimmed. And I'm pushing that out of the way for now. And let's see. This is the blue on the bottom. One goes here. One goes here. Tail here. Tail here. Remember to get in there and just pull those apart really good. Then tail for the burlap. No, loop for the bowlap. Burlap, bowlap. Called it. Copyright. Loop. Tail. White is the loop. Tail. Loop. And tail. Then the farmhouse stripe. That's what it's called. Loop, tail, loop, tail, and then I'm going to go loop, tail, even though that ended the other way, that's fine. And then loop, no. Loop, and tail. Alright, and that looks like a mess because none of it's dovetailed and it's just kind of everywhere, but it's that kind of like, you know, big explosion of ribbon. Why won't this one curl? Business, what are you doing? Hey, get down. You need to calm down. Alright, so my bow is done and it looks terrible. Um, hmm. Maybe I need to have it some other way. I just don't like the way that looks. You know what, let's get it on the, let's get it on our enormous wreath and then we'll see. Alright, so now that this is all done, I'm going to cut this. It's done. Oh, All right, I put this up on my door, y'all. It is, it is so big. Um. And I'm pretty sure that I saw, while it was up on my door, that there is a spot, not where anything is missing, because I don't think that's possible, but I saw like a little, a little, a little sliver of frame peeking through. So I'm tech, I'm generally, not technically, I am generally going to put this where there's either a hole or the mesh is looking a little worse for wear, and I think that's right here. I'm just going to kind of separate out so I can get to the frame. That's a good time on a city. That's not how that song goes.
Oh my goodness, y'all, where is this? All right, that side's through. And then this side, hopefully will go through quite a bit easier, you would think. Let you know that I am on the struggle bus. Okay, here we go. I'm like looking through the side of this, trying to get this on two other. There we go. I think I. Oh, oh no, my finger stuck. Right, I'm gonna pull this in, but not super tight because I don't want to scrush, scrush, scrunch up everything. That might be a little tight, but at least it's on there. Okay. And it definitely needs to be this way. I'm pretty sure I'm going to put it up there. That looks really, like, small up against this giant wreath, huh? Oh, crap. It just needs to be spread out some more, huh? Business, please quit making noise. Seriously, brah. No, I mean, listen, some people make these bows, they are so enormous. I'm like, that's why you charge in an astronomical price, because this wreath you made, it's $10 a mesh and $45 of a bow. And my back's crapping out again. Where's my... I'm trying to go in order here so I don't miss anything. There should be a burlap a burlap boy over here. Well, there's not. So where is it? There's a loop. There's a tail. Hmm. Wait a minute, y'all. What the hell? It's, it's tucked in between the freaking pipe cleaner and the the base. So what is everybody gonna do? Like I know like I get voluntary quarantines, like, you know, let's just let me for the my best interest stay inside. Like I get that. If you're choosing to do that, what are you gonna do? I have like a list of movies I want to watch, but really with these scissors that are supposed to be so fantastic. I have a list of movies I want to watch, but I cannot watch a movie and do nothing. Can't just sit there. Never been able to do that. So, oh, I should have cut these before I put this on here. Um... <clears throat> Like, the idea of sitting around and watching movies for two weeks, however long this goes on for, I think that's all well and good, but that's not realistic for me. And I would imagine, hopefully, that's not realistic for everybody. I would love to just, like, do a deep clean of my house, but my back hurts so much doing anything that I'm just like, eh, I'll live in this hoarder house. But there's no, like, dead cats or, like, bugs. There's just, like craft supplies everywhere. A lot of felt. Alright, so let's see how she looks now. Perk up, sis. This is going to get in here. Really open those up. Open those up. Why are you backwards? Come over here. This loop over here. Yeah, I think that looks better. I think this is supposed to be up here. Shh. This is, I promise you there's nothing over there. It's probably an ornament.
What is it? Okay, it's just something that probably. Oh god, look at what happened. Okay, I think I fixed your shade. You are safe, baby. Oh my goodness, that almost got gotcha. you. That almost got gotcha you that time. I'm sorry, something was making a crinkling noise and the dog was not having it. He don't like no crinkling noises in his house. Okay. So... Yeah, I mean, that is a bow. And it's not super huge, which I like. So I need to cut all the tails that are going to bring the rest of the... <coughs> the rest of the ribbon through here. But I want to put on my sign. Because the more stuff I put in here, the harder the pipe cleaner is going to be to get through. So this is how my sign is set up because I can't find my staple gun. I will go back after I locate a staple gun or buy another one and staple into at least these two, you know, here through the thicker part, because this hot glue, she's not going to hold up through 4th of July. So, on my Memorial Day, or however long this wreath would be outside. So, this is it, and I left this sticker on, because I got this for a dollar from Walmart. Like... I don't know, it was a while ago. And I think... Wait, how did I have this set up? No, that looks like a pentagram. Was it like this? Yeah. It's kind of like this because it hits here, in the middle, and here. Yeah, these are just glued on. And there is... This is going to be an ordeal. Glued on, and then I put a little piece of ribbon over it with the hopes that that will keep it from pulling right off. Because, you know, I don't trust just gluing a pipe cleaner or something. Okay. Tighten that up a little bit. I want this to go kind of in, because I don't want, these are, I mean, they're not like super sharp, but I would prefer they not, uh, you know, kill somebody when they're walking in a house. I'm finding that you just need to be forceful with this, like, just move that mesh out the way. Okay, that one's through. And then this one, I think I can just go on the enter inner ring. Get this down. Okay, not pulling it too tight. Get it tight enough. Yeah, that bow is looking dinkier and dinkier. This is going to go... One side through here. I found like if... If I stick my fingers up through the back, then I can push the pipe cleaner into my fingers and then pull them out the back. Let me see if I can show you how I'm doing. Ow! Yeah, like, see, I just stuck my fingers through there, and now I'm going to take these and pull them this way, and I'm leaving that as it is, because... This is still kind of, I mean, is that sticking out too far? I don't know, but this bow is not going to work. So, I feel like I've wasted that ribbon, because I don't have a lot of it. This ribbon, I mean, I have a lot of everything else, but... So maybe... Uh, maybe I can move this one down here, and then make a bigger one. Yeah, a bigger one with like some longer tails. I'll see what I can get out of that 
stripe driven. Taking this. We love her, but. Let's see how she does down here. Let's see if this works better for her. Whoo, y'all. It is like, what time is it? I think it's like 4 o'clock. I'm ready to just like get in bed and see if that German Shepherd comes back to life. I think a couple of. People are going live on YouTube tonight too. I'm, that's my new thing. I like I don't watch them live because I'm like, oh my god, quit talking. Quit talking to everybody and just do what you're supposed to do. And you can't fast forward live, so when they start talking, I just fast forward if I'm watching the replay. Of course, the irony of that is that I've spent the past however long this video is just talking to nobody. You know, just living my life. All right, that looks better down there. You can't even see it because there's no room. That looks better down there. And then I'm going to make a big one for up here. <clears throat> I think. Well, I mean, yeah, I need a, I need something up here. And Hobby Lobby had that Christmas stuff up. Not that Christmas. I'm a wish they had that Christmas stuff up. They should not take Christmas down. That's just me. I know somebody just unsubscribed to me saying that, but whatever. Um... They had their 4th of July patriotic stuff out, but there was no, it wasn't on sale yet, and Happy Lobby doesn't get my money unless I get a deal. You know what I mean, y'all? Okay, so, there's that. I'm gonna, oh god, it weighs a thousand pounds. It weighs more than all the stars in the sky. Okay. So let's try this again. How much of this do I have left? <clears throat> let's see. 24. 48. It's 48 and 24. 72, like 5 feet? Is that right? I think. One. Two, three, four, five. Okay, 72 is six feet. All right, so in order to make this, I have 72 inches to work with. So if I do 10 inch tails, that will leave me with 52. And if I do five inch loops, which that's what I did before, oh, six, six, 12, 13, 30, I don't know. We're going to stay. We're going to make her big. We're going to make her loopy. Get one more loop out of this. Mm. Yes, and one tail will be slightly longer. I'm fine with that. Okay. So, yeah. That's, that's what we're doing. And next, I use the. Uh, what do I use next, y'all? Whatever it is, it's gone now. Is it the burlap? What did I do with that? I mean, I have 42 other rolls, but, like, what did I do with the one I was using? Okay, I don't know. Should I leave it out? Maybe? Should I add it in later so it's a little different when I find it? Let me add in... How did I lose a, a thing of ribbon? Probably fell on the floor, so it's gone forever. Okay, and this one I'm starting a, going out this way because those are where my two loops are. Yeah, my um, my ribbon is right here on the side of my desk, 
and it's on a shoe rack. So, <coughs> excuse me, I can't, um, I can't get spools off without, like, it's not hard to dismantle it, it's just, um, I don't want to. Especially when I can just pull, and I know that when I'm using these smaller ribbons, I usually use, um, oh, wait a minute now. Okay, Miss Four Loops. I usually use the whole spool. Okay. I like what you did there. Um, now this one. We ended there, so we're going to start here. Make a 10 inch. I'll probably bring that up a little bit for you tomorrow. Well, I guess this one's just not going to have the burlap in it. I have another roll somewhere, but. Me. I wish I had some red that was not overtly Christmas or overtly Valentine's Day. I have tubing, but I feel like this is not a tubing kind of wreath. I mean, at least not in the bow. Do I have anything else I can put in here? I'm gonna have this like black and. Mm, no, I don't want black. Alright, now I'm going to take this. And let's do. What did I bring those other ones into? Nine, eight, something like that? I can bring those in just a little bit more. Six. And my ribbon fell on the floor. The dog is going to eat it at any minute. We will always twist. Alright, now I'm going to do. Uh, Last. You know what I might do? Let me just add some smaller loops. What do you think about that? About like four? And then I'm going to come through and just do one more. That's that like two. You can see I'm getting tired because the I am the tired I get the less talkative I am. I'm not tired, I'm just my back hurts. I'm gonna move that over so it's lining up where everything is kind of intersecting. Move my little knot to the back. Make sure the razor's back. Oh, good. I still have an extra pipe cleaner. I was worried I was going to have to stand up again, and then I might not be able to make it back over here. Make sure it's all the way I want it. Okay. Her out, and I'm going to before I even do anything. I'm 
What is wrong with these scissors? Seriously. Everybody needs to calm down. See, it's like they cut fine when they're in a certain area. <clears throat> Oh, so I ended up using a whole spool of the white, a whole spool of the blue, and a whole spool of this farmhouse stripe, which I'm fine with the white but farmhouse stripe because I got a, I don't think I have any white left, and it's not really white, it's like a crease. Um, I have like a massive amount of that farmhouse stripe alive because for some reason at my Walmart, I don't know if it's going to be the same at yours if you go looking for it, it's on clearance, but it's like with all the spring ribbons, like they're all on clearance. And I said, okay, okay, Mr. Offray. You're going to be on clearance. I'm going to buy you all up. Can I get this a little tighter? Oh. Okay. Here's the thing I've been scared about the most while we're just having a nice like, conversation here. Like, I used to always be scared of going blind because I have, um, I have really bad... What are you doing? What's going on? This is the front. I have really bad vision, and I had a bunch of problems with my eyes when I was little, and I have cataracts, and I'm already blind in one eye, so I used to always be, like, super scared of going blind, but I am, as of late, scared that one day I am going to wake up and not be able to use my hands anymore. You know, it seems like, wouldn't you rather go blind? I mean, wouldn't you rather do that than go blind? And I guess, like, to a certain extent, I would. But I can't imagine not being able to make things. But then I guess it's like a double-edged sword because, like, how am I going to make things? I guess I could, I mean, I know I could still make things if I was blind, but I'd be like, hey, how did it come out? You guys, how did it come out, that thing that I made? And then I'd have to rely on my mom and she, you know... She thinks everything I do is just phenomenal. Never been done before. Absolutely amazing. So I'd be like, are you telling me the truth? But yeah, my, my hands just hurt. And I know it's because I've been literally working my entire life um, with my hands, doing very tedious things with my hands. But, um, you know. I want a new anti-inflammatory, and I am hoping that, in addition to helping my back, it maybe helps my hands a little bit too. Because it would be very difficult for me to not be able to make things. But even though, like, I'm not making any money on YouTube, my channel's not monetized anymore. And I don't always sell what I make because, I don't know, I guess, I guess if I, like, really applied myself and went to craft shows and stuff, but, uh, your boy's got the anxiety, so, it's, it's, uh, not as easy as you would think, but, you know, even if I don't, if I'm not making money on YouTube, like, I still like making videos, I love teaching, I always thought that if I was anything, I would want to be a teacher, but I don't like kids, um, you know. But I think I'd be a good teacher. I used to teach quilting classes, and everybody would always, like, be very complimentary. It's like, oh, it was so much easier. This looks like a better bow. You know, it was, it was so much easier than I thought it would be. I never thought that I could do it. And I'm like, yeah, you can do it, sis. Go in. I'll teach you how to make the quilt. Why is this one so incredibly long? No? No? 
Oh, maybe it's just not that. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, so I have some tails to work with that I want to, you know, I can play with those a little bit, or I can chop them off and just forget about it. But this one needs to come up here. Am I still recording? So let's bring, bring in the beast. Oh, okay. So this I want kind of on an angle. So I want the bow, which let's pray this is big enough now to go here. Yes, y'all, that's what it should look like. I can't believe I tried to put this little puny bow on there. Um, yeah, is that how I want it? I need to kind of... You know, I'm gonna get it on here. The thing about like making wreaths is, I wait like I always you know I, I finish the wreath on the video, I go outside and take pictures, and then I come back inside and start moving things around and undoing things and not really I usually don't add things, but it's hard to, um, it's hard to do this like without having the wreath up on a wall. I guess I could figure out filming that, but if I have to make myself camera ready every day, y'all just never going to see me. Y'all going to be like, what happened to him? Where is he? Did he move somewhere where there are no people and it's very cold? Is he living in Nome, Alaska? Yeah, all these pipe clippers on the back here are like eight feet long. Okay, I'm just going to get this on here a little bit. That's how it stays. I guess if I wanted to, I could kind of loop those in, but I think I'm just going to leave them hanging for now. Yeah, that looks much better. I have got to stand up because I'm about to throw up. My back hurts so bad. Y'all ever get that? Wait, in so much pain you throw up? No, just me? That's my chair moving. All right. And I think I do want to take this, and I'm just going to find the nearest tie. Pleat it up like this, and the nearest tie, which is, oh, there's so many ribbon tails in that. It's this one, but I don't know where the other side of it is. Oh, there it is. Let's put that on there. Oh, my goodness, my back. And I could do the same thing for this one and this one. This is like a, what I did with my... Easter wreath. I want this to go here. Right there. This will come out here. This one I'm just going to leave. Put that one there. This one could... Do I like that, how it's crossing over? Wait, this goes on top of this, so it could technically come... Like this one, maybe? Right, I'm going to leave that one, because I don't know what I want to do. And it doesn't want to pull straight for some reason. There we go. Okay, that's better. Y'all, we just went on a wild ride, but we got these bows on here. Boots with the fur. All right, moving this out of the way again. And I want, let's see, do we think we have nine feet of this? Two, four, six, Eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Okay, we got enough. Sixteen, eighteen. So I could do two. 
18, uh, 18 ish. I don't know if I want to do two. Well, I guess instead of doing 12 inch, I could do 14 so you could see this a little bit more. Let's see. Is how I do this. That's um, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's see where that gets us. I wish I had more of like an. I, I should have, when I ordered from Craft Outlet, I should have made sure to get navy blue ribbon because apparently it's like a freaking uh, unicorn. You know, you can't find it anywhere. Um, I don't know why. I found some at. I think when it was when I was at Hobby Lobby, I found some and I was like, oh, good, navy blue ribbon. And I was going to check out and I was like, wait a minute. And I opened the package a little bit on the side and it was sheer. And I was like, nope, not today. Not today, mama. Oh my God, these scissors are like chewing through. But here I am still using them. So these are BS. Get out of here, you crazy dog. I don't know why you think you're going to do T-S-I-D-E because outside is for good dogs and you're a bad dog. Everybody knows it. The whole internet knows it now. And you know what, Jen's going to watch this video. You know, when you come over, she's not going to hold you. And you know I'm not going to hold you because I'm a successful businessman. With successful scissors. My dog's name is Mr. Business. I adopted him in 2015 after my other dog of uh, 12 million years died it wasn't 12 million years it was like 11 million years i don't exaggerate um he died when he was it was like 14 um lived a good long life and i was like no dogs ever again my mom was, you know, after a couple months had passed, my mom was like, well, you know, maybe get a dog, because you're all by yourself. And I was like, I like that. That's how I want to be. Um, and then something just one day, like, my mom was off of work early, and I think I went to go pick her up because she didn't have the car or something. And, you know, we went back to her house, and she's like, so what are you going to do for the rest of the day? And I was like, um, I kind of want to go adopt a dog. I ain't never seen anybody move so fast in my life. She's like, get in the car, get in the car, let me grab my checkbook. <laughs> so we went to the shelter and it was extremely hard on me. Like it's like still looking back, like I'm like, I don't know how I managed to do this because they said, oh, you know, let's go outside. I said, you know, I need something small because my house is not like, I, I, I don't care. Uh, like if you have a, a giant dog in a little house, like that's just not cool with me. Um, so I was like, no, I can't put a big dog in my little house. And my landlords probably would not appreciate me going from a miniature dachshund to a uh, 
I don't know. An Akita. My grandpa had an Akita. Oh, this wreath is heavy. So, I go there and this woman, she says, all right, well, let's, you know, let's see what we have. Let's see what's in stock. And I was like, oh, okay. And like, we're walking around and she's like, okay, these are, um, these are seniors. And this one got dropped off here because he was too old. And I was like, what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? No. I said, I can't, as much as I would love to be that person who can adopt a senior dog, no. I said, I can't, I can't do that. Like, I am still to this day, four years later, almost five years later, still not okay with losing the dog that I had for 14 years. I can't get a new dog that is not, like, I need a dog that's going to last another 14 years. So... We look around, and, like, I, I get upset, and I, like, I'm crying. My mom's like, it's okay. You know, well, maybe it was too soon. And I was like, no. I said, I just, I really, I really want to do this. You know, I want another dog. But, um, you know, it's just these, these old dogs. So she's like, you know, we have somebody inside who we, you know, they, like, had picked him up. Um, they picked up this dog, and they said, you know, he's going to be ready to be adopted. And I think it was, like... We were there on like a, I think it was like a Friday and it was going to be able to be adopted on Monday because the pound had picked him up and nobody had like called, nobody had done anything to claim him. So she was like, what do you think about him? And he was, it was a little cute. Um, I don't even know what, I mean, it's not like you, I mean, how often do you see like a purebred dog at the, um, at the vet? But he was like. It's a boy, because I told him I wanted a boy. What am I doing wrong with these? I told him I wanted a boy. He was kind of scraggly. Like, he looked like a dog that had to be groomed, which I wasn't thrilled about, but at the same time, I was just like, you know, I, I want to give a dog a good home. You know, I don't want... I want one dog to not have to go to sleep and wake up here again tomorrow morning. So, I'm looking at him, and I'm like, Okay, well, you know, he's, we, I don't even, I don't even think we took him out. Like, I was just looking at him and I was like, you know what, he's, um, he seems pretty good. Can we, um, can we take him out? So, you know, like, take him out in the yard and I can have him run around and see what his temperament is based on, you know, however long you're with a dog. And the woman said, oh. And I was still looking at the other dog, the first, the dog in the cage. She said, oh, I forgot we had this little guy came in, and he's finally ready for adoption. And I turn around, and I hear my mom, before I turn around, I hear my mom say, oh, my God. And I turn around, and I see my dog, who I eventually adopted, and he is this scrawny, scr I don't even know what he's at. I hope he doesn't hear me talking about him. Like, scrawny, scruffy, wiry. Look at him! Hi, baby! I'm talking about you! Skinny, um, like, baby. Like, he was only... They said he was a year old. He, he We eventually found out when I took him to the vet that he was only, like, six months old. Just, like, my other dog was, like, all smooth and shiny. This one, he's, like, wiry. He looks like a little, um... Like, he's covered in, like, rat fur. And I just looked at him, and I was like, Holy crap, that's a dog. And my mom was like, my mom held him first because I was, I was like scared. I was like, oh my God, what if he doesn't like me? What if he says something about me? So, um, my mom like takes him and she's holding him and I like go over there very tentatively because I am absolutely in love with him. I am, I am going to change my will. Like I, as soon as I get home, I'm going to put him in my will. I'm going to, you know, like, I'm just like so into this dog and he's like, very reserved, like he's just, he, like he's, he's scared, like he's been in a kennel because they, they had to test him for whatever it is, like Parvo, whatever it is, the way they have to, they have to like stay away from the other dog, so he's been in the kennel the whole time he's been in the vet, at the um, shelter, and he's just like, he looks kind of terrified, and my mom's like, what do you think, and I was like, oh my god, I absolutely have to have him, and every other one you have in stock like him, um, so... I don't even, don't even say, let's go outside and see, like, let's, let's not do anything. I didn't even hold him. I was like, let, this is what I want. I want this one. And 
we go to fill out the paperwork and my mom's like, here, you hold him. And I remember I had a, um, I had a chemical burn on my chest from Tiger Balm. And when I was holding him, he was like hanging on to me with his little hands over my shoulder. And it was so hot. Like I was burning up because I had this disgusting burn on my chest. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I was like, I held him for a little bit. And I was like, mom, you have to hold him. Like he is, he is boiling. And I didn't even think that it was because of the chemical burn, but we signed all the papers. My mom pays for him and says, you know, this was in like December. She's like, Merry Christmas. So am I missing one of these somewhere? Yeah. Um, she says like, Merry Christmas. And I'm like, oh my God, he's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Except for my dead dog. Um, so she's driving and we get him home and I still have all my other dog stuff. Like I don't have any food, but I still have like, you know, the bowls I have toys. I still have toys everywhere. I gave a lot of them to the shelter. Um, but I still have way too many toys because, uh, I spoiled the baby. So we get him home and like, I'm holding him and get him inside. Oh, this is the one that's short. I got to concentrate. I can't talk and wrap together a pipe cleaner at the same time, apparently. So we get him home and get him inside and I put him down on the ground and I'm like, this is your new house. And let me tell y'all, he goes ape crap. There's a video, I'm videoing him. He's like so reserved, so just like shy. And then we put him down on the ground. My mom's sitting on the ground with him. He is just going crazy. He's jumping all over the place. He's licking all over my mom. He's like, he's running back and forth. He's checking stuff out. He keeps coming by me. And like, you know, I'm trying to like pick him up. It's just, he was like so happy. Um, Why is that not enough? I must have put one where one did not belong, but that's fine. I can cut some more. So yeah, he was just like, I had this like, I was like, oh, he's so perfect because look, he's so sweet and so quiet. And then we got him home and it was like all hell broke loose. And he has been like that ever since. The first couple of nights I had him, I, there's a video, I think it's on Instagram or something of me like filming him when I get up in the morning and he's like, you know, he's like in the kitchen and he's running all around and like tossing stuff up in the air and barking and dancing around the back door. And I'm like, why do you think it's okay to keep me up all night and then wake me up so early in the morning? Because you have to go make a pee pee. <laughs> but he used to, um, as soon as we would get in bed, this was for, ugh, this was for like six months. I mean, it was like summertime before he finally calmed down. And I think he only did that because it was so hot. He was like, I don't have the energy to aggravate you anymore. He would get in bed and he would bite my hands for roughly an hour until he was like, okay, well, I'm done with that. And then he'd just kind of like, you know, grab a toy or curl up and take a little nap or something. But he was crazy. He still is crazy. But he's a sweet boy. He's a pretty, pretty princess boy. And he has no idea what his name is because I call him something different every day. Now he knows his name is Business name is business and he loves bread he does never want to go on atkins he does never want to go on keto he does never want to have to be gluten-free and he loves cheese i could literally open cheese three blocks away and he would try to get out of the house and come to find me to eat the cheese And you have to pay attention to him all the time. If you're over here, you're at his house, so you have to do what he wants. Which is usually just like, hey, pet me until you die. Pet me until one of us dies. Wait, is this... Do you get a ribbon? Oh my god, this is so full. I'm just like... It's like a, a, a like an excavation in here. Yes, you get a ribbon.
this video is gonna be three and a half hours long. I was watching somebody's video today and it was like, let's make a wreath. And it was like three and a half hours long. And I said, oh my God, these people, why does it take them so long? And I was like, oh wait, no, it takes me that long. I just speed everything up or cut everything out or whatever. Oh, okay. Wow. I do feel like I want maybe just over here like two more streamers, two more tails. And I have nothing to put in this. I have no like, oh no, I do have something, but I don't know if I'm going to use it. I bought some little stars to paint and then I finished the base and I was like, okay, well, those are going to get completely lost in this. Ah, I did it wrong. Yeah, maybe I need to start standing up more. My back feels so much better when I'm not. I think it's because, like, I'm sitting and I'm crouched over because I'm on, like, a bar stool. Me and my mom started to clean out my living room this weekend because my living room has, I've never used my living room. Um, my quote, my long arm quilting machine has been in here since I moved in. And if you're familiar with a long arm, you know that they are enormous. Mine is about six feet wide and 12, no, it's six feet wide, and about 14 feet long. So that was just covered with stuff. So we went through and condensed a bunch of that stuff and I took the rails off my machine. So now it's just a giant table and I took all the stuff I don't use and I stacked it up and made the room look a lot bigger, less claustrophobic. I'm definitely gonna have to put something there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah. Just it looks, it's better, it's bigger, and I am trying to convince myself that it is going to be worth it in the long run to move my filming setup to the long arm table because I'll be able to sit in a regular chair instead of a, like I'll be able to sit in a regular chair to film, but I won't be able to stand up and film because the table will be too low, so I don't know what I'm doing. Do I kind of, is there a... There's a tie right here. I mean, there's this one, but I want to kind of put this in here. I think so. <clears throat> I'm going to go through afterwards and cut all those pipe cleaners down. Let's see. Does this come here. You come out here. Y'all go there. This poofs up here. And this poofs up here. And for the piece de resistance, we come over here and pull all this mesh that's behind here out a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to go crazy. I don't have to because there's so much mesh everywhere else. And fluff and fluff and fluff and fluff. Oh, y'all, this reads with a workout. Yeah, let me go see if I have those other stars that I was looking at. Because it does feel... It doesn't feel, like, empty. I mean, it's not. But it just feels like I need some kind of embellishment, and I'm not putting flowers in it, so... What do you guys think? You coming with me, baby? Oh my goodness, you're the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm sorry, the dog was supposed to keep y'all company, but, uh, you know, he had to follow me and see me do nothing. Okay, this is what I have. I don't know what this is from. I think it was like a door hanger, a really sad door hanger, but the colors kind of go. I obviously need to come through here and trim that and that. 
and I know I have some kind of patriotic fabric if I wanted to, because I like these, they're just very flat. You know, definitely have like a red and blue, I mean a blue and white gingham and some kind of stripe. So, I guess like this. We put one there, one down here. Let's see, those are like too close together. Like maybe tuck one behind this bow a little bit, and then put one up here. See, I like the stars, but then I feel like it's so many stars, but what is 4th of July if it's not a bunch of stars? So, <coughs> I'm going to go take my cough syrup and get in bed with my heating pad. And I have had a lot of fun doing this. I was like, oh, you know, I want to do these longer form videos because... You know, the way things are going right now, people need something, and if I can help you, if I can be that something, I'm all about it. Like, whatever. And if uh, a couple of people watch the... Why is this up here? What are you doing? Um, you know, if a couple of people watch these and they get my view times up and I get remonetized, that wouldn't be the worst thing either. So yeah, you know, don't worry, um, Dr. Mike, you know, Dr. Mike, he's like the sexy YouTube doctor, he says, be aware, don't be anxious, and uh, just because it's a pandemic doesn't mean you have to panic. I mean, literally, that's, isn't that what pandemic stems from? Like, we're going to get into etymology, but yeah. Be safe. Don't be stupid. I saw somebody today on one of the, you know, they do that penny shopping thing at Dollar General and the new list comes out every Tuesday and the guy who runs it was like, hey, you know, everybody, be careful. I'm not going to be out there every day looking for deals for y'all. And somebody's like, well, uh, what, what about for the risk takers? And I was like, are you stupid, woman? No, you don't get to get, y'all see what I almost did? Y'all don't get to get stuff for a penny. You don't get to be cheap when it's at the expense of someone else's health. Like, can you think about somebody else besides yourself for a second? Stupid people. I hope she sees this. You're dumb. You're selfish. And you don't need all of that dollar candy. Go eat an apple. Y'all, she sent me off. Okay. So... That's it. Be safe. Be careful. Wash your hands. Don't buy more toilet paper than you need to. Because somebody's going to think you got something wrong with your butt. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching. If you watch this whole thing, please comment below and tell me, um, I don't know. What can you tell me? Tell me there's a green shamrock on my desk because there's a green shamrock over there. That's how I know you watched. And, you know, ugh. All right, I gotta cut all these damn pipe clearers off now. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these yet, so. I will leave it at that, and I will see you guys. The short version of this is gonna go up on Friday. The long version is gonna go up on Saturday. So I will see you guys on Monday. With something, I don't know what yet. All right, bye. -bye.